How did everybody do with that wicked cold uh, weather? Yeah. That okay. Was something. Everybody survive okay? Yeah. I was insane. It was. I was watching, uh, I'm a weather geek, so I was watching Mount Washington. And I watched the weather go from like negative 35 to negative 40, negative 45, negative 47. You're like, and wow, it, that's impressive. <laughs> and that set that that tied a record, but the wind chill reached negative one ten, which was a new record for Mount Washington by seven and a half degrees. Wow. Yeah, insane. It, it was colder than Mars. <laughs> so so I heard that the, the folks that were up there on Mount Washington actually went out there every 15 minutes, which is more than normal. Normally they just do it once an hour, but they were Correct. trying to see if there was going to be a record. So I can't even yep. imagine how they did that. I don't know. The negative 45 we had here was pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you guys, I just want to test this out since I'm also on the Zoom so that I can share my screen and show you all every stuff that you need to see, but wanted to make sure there was no feedback or anything like that. Okay, sounds okay. good. Awesome, thank you all for bearing with us. I don't know why Zoom has decided not to launch on my computer. Mm -hmm. Thanks for a fun Monday night. Mm -hmm. um, Did Karen shoot, get your email? Probably not. Okay. So just bear with us for um, a couple, more seconds so that we can get everyone on the in the meeting that needs to be in the meeting. If you guys don't mind. And then we'll just dive into point two and old business since we're behind us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We just need we do need to vote on the minutes from yeah of course yeah, yeah. which like the whole agenda which we can do because I think the people that we're missing are on voting. And Randy if it's okay I have a one and a half minute resilience update. Excellent. All right. Concise. <laughs> Maybe uh, one minute. I think our um, council liaison is about to join. Okay. As long as she's checking her email. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have Karen's oh, phone good. number. Oh, good. Okay. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you. Um, Maggie is not here either. Oh. Okay. And she is, um, uh, see. Oh, she is. Is she coming in? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see her now. Great. Hey. All right. Let me write all this down. Thank you all for your patience. <laughs> Yeah, thank you all. Sorry about the technical difficulties. So, um, Randy, if you want to call us to order, we can. Um... Okay, welcome to February's uh, Conservation Commission meeting. Thank you all for, um, you know, I'm just mindful that there's a lot of work that everyone's been doing um, since we last met, and I appreciate that. And I also um, am looking forward to, after I call it to order, to welcoming some um, a new face anyway. Uh, why don't we take attendance, Jamie? Sure. Um, start with in person, Randy. Here. Jessica. Here. Dick. Here. And online, Pete. Here. Rita. Here. Marla. Here. Maggie. Here. Thank you. And uh, guests in the room, do we wanna, would you like to say hello? Andrew Mackey, Executive Director of the Scarborough Land Trust. Marvin Gates, 423 Black Point Road. Thank you. And um, and our council liaison, Councillor Shoup, Karen Shoup, is online. And uh, the Appointments Committee uh, recommended an appointment uh, of Kathleen Miller uh, for uh, the Town Council to approve. And so she's in that process. and. Uh, we hope and expect that she'll be approved by the town council and she's uh, joining us as 
a guest tonight and looking forward to having her part of this conversation. So oh, great. Um, I'm glad welcome. she's there tonight. Welcome. Yes. She's online with us right now. Awesome. And then um, Emily couldn't make it. Um, so I, I want to um, do my uh, usual um, beginning of this meeting with an acknowledgement honoring all indigenous people, the people who came here before us and nurtured this place as stewards of mother earth, the first people. I may make this acknowledgement aware that this land is unceded and that issues of water and territorial rights and encroachment upon sacred sites are ongoing in the Wabanaki homeland. I acknowledge that the Awaskawa people who once lived in what is now Scarborough um, and that as we support efforts for land and water protection, we honor the current tribes who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. Um, so uh, with thanks to Jamie's excellent organization, we have the minutes from our last meeting. I mean, I'll quickly do a review of our, our agenda, um, but why don't we um, take a, a approve our minutes? <laughs> we have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Thanks. Thanks, Rita. Our uh, roll call, um, Jessica. Yes. Randy. Yes. Pete. Yes. Rita. Yes. Marla. Yes. Oh, and, and Dick. Has Dick been made a full? Oh, yes. Um, oh my God, Marla. You don't know what? I don't know. I, that might have to happen at the uh, the appointments committee meeting and all of that yeah. stuff. Too. Okay, we'll sort that out. I think you're. Um, I think you're, you're going to be. I assume now. that you'll be moved into full. No, she's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your support, Dick. Um, <laughs> So tonight we've got um, the result of um, some great work of our committees. Uh, we're gonna be going through that. Uh, and uh, in, under new business, uh, we'll hear from uh, Karen Shoup, who's with the council, has um, set goals for 2023, and she'll uh, lead us in a discussion about what those goals are and, and how we can work together as a commission. Um, because it highlights our role and our responsibilities. Um, and we'll have uh, hopefully a good discussion there. And then coming out of the planning board meeting, we have um, a request uh, to review and update the town's plant species list. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go through some updates, including, um, well, that'll come from our um, uh, education committee around sustainable Scarborough Day. Um, and then we'll have some updates. We will do our best to adjourn by 730. Um, so let's get to it. Um, turn it over to Jessica, who's leading our Conserving Land Subcommittee. So we had our first Conserving Land Subcommittee meeting uh, <laughs> where we reaffirmed our first goal for 2023. And Dick and uh, Maggie, please jump in here, is to uh, finalize the conserved lands layer map. Um, and to do that, we have a, a couple of requests. The first one is for the town to give us a presentation <laughs> of the conserved lands map uh, as it currently exists and uh, some details associated with that. So the conserved lands layer as it exists on the town's website um, has a few overlays. And so we would like some more information on those specific overlays, uh, including how those overlays were determined to be important um, so that we can understand that process uh, and see if there are any data limitations or additional overlays or considerations. Uh, for example, one of the things uh, we want to confirm is that all of the appropriate nonprofit organizations, such as the Scarborough Land Trust, the, the most up to date version of the conserved lands layers of each of these nonprofit organizations are included mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at, as they feel is appropriate. Sometimes you can't identify properties on a public forum, which we understand, um, but just to make sure that that's as up to date as possible and Am I missing anything there? Well, that's good. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I will just share that we did get um, to the um, Scarborough Land Trust uh, 
portion of that map is being updated. Um, we just got the information from Scarborough Land Trust for additional properties to add. So that will be updated. I've sent it to our GIS person to add. So there were two properties that needed to be included on that map. Um, and so the Conserving Lands Subcommittee is making the specific request, but of course, if others would like to join that sort of tutorial walkthrough of the data, we would invite them. Our next subcommittee meeting is March 8th at 5.30 via Zoom. And happy to have anybody join who's interested. And we'll keep you up to date on like where we're off, where we are in that process. Um, I think one of the other areas we're, we're thinking about is the beginning with habitat maps and sort of understanding their strengths and limitations and this personal growth. Like, does it only include state? endangered species or does it have some more specific local considerations or is that something we would need to mm -hmm. consider okay so are you want the presentation at the march 8th meeting is that what you were thinking uh i don't know if that's a reasonable okay. request <laughs> <laughs> i mean if it's on zoom i think it's a little bit more easier to accommodate our gis person actually lives in new hampshire so him joining in the evening via zoom is more um likely then we meet in the evenings yes so we're at 5 30. 5 30. any uh gis work is even better on a zoom than <laughs> than in, in this room really yeah so um maybe what um what i can do jess is set up a time um to maybe meet you with you um our gis person and myself just so like he is a like is getting the information directly from you for what you're looking for yep. um, as part of that presentation. And I think we could, I'm uh, not mean to speak for Maggie, I'm looking at that we could be flexible on, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Um, we were just hoping it would be like, not like March before our full conservation commission meeting, if mm -hmm. April, we'd prefer it be before, not after, so that we can report out. Okay. Right, right. Maggie, do you have, did you have anything? No, else? I don't. I think Jess got everything. Okay. And so what I'm hearing from you, Jessica, is that this is um, the subcommittee is going to be doing this work, and the rest of us on the commission are welcome to attend and participate, but um, they're taking the lead on this and going to go for it. Yeah. And I, I do think that we might uh, also look to some of our other subcommittees to help us like identify the best data, like resiliency might have some suggestions on the layers that we should be looking at. We're not pretending we know everything that should be included or, or not. But I see hands, so multiple Oh, hands. yes, um, Pete. Yeah, just a quick question for the subcommittee and maybe also for Andrew. I remember at our last meeting, we kind of discussed whether or not the Scarborough Marsh should actually be included or excluded from this calculation, because that's about 3,200 acres, which is, it, it'll really skew whether or not we're achieving our goal or not achieving our goal. So I wonder if we'd come to a decision about that, or is that still kind of up in the air? I don't believe we've come to a decision. I mean, I think what the decision that we've made is we want a lot more information before we start making decisions and understanding, like I said, some of the challenges and the opportunities with the data that we do have um, before we say, yes, this is included. No, this isn't included. Okay. I mean, my, I would advocate for not including it. Um, as part of Scarborough's goals, but that's I just, would I would agree with that too. This yeah, that just makes sense to me. But we'll see. Andrew, you had you wanted to yeah, um, if I could, I, I might suggest that you think about inviting the parks and conservation land board um, to that workshop because they use GIS quite a bit in their evaluation tool. And one of the things that we have been talking to them about and going back and forth on is the use of things like beginning with habitat and whether that's really getting what we need in Scarborough because it is a statewide mapping uh, system that focuses on things of statewide significance. Um, and so they might be really interested in attending a workshop with that. 
And I believe, so I wasn't at the last meeting and you probably were, uh, so I was only reading this from the notes, that there has been a formal request by the Parks and Land Conservation Board to beginning with Habitat for a presentation. So I will confirm that tomorrow <laughs> and also try to piggyback because um, there's a lot of interest from the Conservation Commission and the Parks and Land Conservation Board. I don't imagine we're getting multiple presentations. <laughs> we we'll want to make sure we're consolidating our requests and talking to each other. And I just want to, um, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but once we get to the discussion of the um, town council goals, one of the goals that you probably saw from your packet was how to, some strategies for how we achieve 30 by 30. And in order to achieve that, we need to know what our starting point is. So um, I think the council is going to be looking for some input from this group for um, where are we starting? What is our baseline and how are we going to build from there? Um, so all good conversations to have. I hope to have kind of um, a draft scheme for everyone to, to look at at the last meeting or at the next meeting, um, I hope, because um, I know that they want to have this kind of in place sooner rather than later so that they can measure making progress towards that goal. So maybe we do want to request a March. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tutorial. Great. Um, thank you for that. That was not a minute and a half. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to uh, get us a, 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 a major step forward. Thank you. Um, and then an update on the role of reviewing and advising on land use. Discuss the January planning board review process. Um, so we have um, we have started with thanks to Eric um, getting uh, the review the application review opportunity for the the commission um, this new one for the February four no February twenty first yep. yeah planning board meeting um, comments are due tomorrow. Um, I circulated and we have some comments on um, something that came through. Um, and we have uh, email comments from Pete. Uh, I just circulated that today. Uh, and I would just say, unless we want to further discuss it to, um, tonight, if you want to reflect on it and give me your comments on that piece, then I can send it through and we'll see how this all works. Uh, Pete is, has some to add. Yeah, I, I just hard to see your raised hand because the um all right. well, I'll I'll just go like this. <laughs> uh, I, I your think background's the, yellow and <laughs> yeah, sorry. I think the point you brought up, Randy, in your email um uh, is probably the most important that may warrant uh initial discussion before anything else about you know the overall build out plan for that parcel is including 150 lot, you know, parking lot plus a pizzeria, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we actually review something like this in the context of a gravel temporary parking lot in the context of this larger potential proposal, which we have not seen. So I think you brought up a really good point in your comment. Um, yeah, thank you. And and it, in addition, this is inside a, a plot of land that had already been reviewed for one particular use um, and approved by planning board for residential. And now, uh, there's a portion of that that is for this gravel lot, and then there's going to be a for, then that's going to be built out. We already know that they have plans to do the parking lot because let's note that the current parking lot of the current business um, apparently didn't have enough spaces to accommodate employees, which is the reason for this gravel lot that has been stated in the application. So what's happening here? It's sort of, uh, we're looking microscopically at, at individual instances or applications. And now we've got a whole set of moving parts. And I think for us to sort of zoom out and say, what is happening with the long-term plan? This is one um, pro set of projects that gives us uh, sort of a, a view of what, how else we can um, weigh in on what's happening in Scarborough, be more thoughtful and uh, forward thinking. 
So I don't know if you have anything you want to add, Eric, or... No, I guess um, the only thing I would say is that uh, I know the applicant um, might have some um, sketches of what the ultimate build-out could look like. So if they share that with the planning board on um, Tuesday night, um, I'm certainly happy to forward that to the commission if it's helpful. Okay. Um, so we are stepping into... Um, uh, I don't see what the chat is. Oh. And we're stepping into a um, a a process and um, and trying it out and seeing how um, how this can work. In as we look at also advancing the town council goals and strengthen our re relationship to looking at reviewing land use, we'll sort of get into that too. Was the chat something we should pay attention to? Um, it was Pete saying. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. It was Pete um, saying that he's in favor of removing uh, Scarborough Marsh from our. Oh, okay. Thank you. Calculation. Um, Sorry, late to the game. Any any further thoughts on that piece? Yes. I would say oh. if you have additional comments on that um, memo, please get it to me. I can send this tomorrow by close of business. Is that the deadline for um, comments? Yep. Okay. Um, can you get it to me before 10 tomorrow a.m., please? Um, okay. Um, all right, Pete, your one and a half minute update on building resiliency. Awesome. So uh, very quickly, um, so from a resilience standpoint, uh, it's basically Emily and myself, and she's been traveling and visiting family and unable to make it tonight. But what I wanted to do was just very quickly, um, we're in the process of reviewing a wonderful document that Southern Maine Planning uh, and Development Commission wrote in conjunction with uh, FB Environmental um, called Municipal Guidance for Coastal Resilience. It basically, it's a document about model ordinance language for Maine municipalities. Um, that was developed uh, using a grant from the state. And Jamie, I don't know if the town has kind of dug into this or not, but I've been trying to dig into this from the resilience lens that we've been kind of developing. Um, I'll throw a link in the chat just for everybody else to kind of look at. So we haven't gotten anything beyond just kind of reading through it and providing kind of preliminary feedback to each other. Um, so I don't really have anything to share that's like groundbreaking, except that it's a wonderful document. and. It really builds a, a great foundation for us to work on in terms of tackling a lot of these issues in terms of climate change, sea level rise, et cetera, et cetera, and resilience um, from an ordinance lens. So we're going to use this to kind of build from in developing our recommendations for moving forward. Nice. That's great news. Um, oh, Dick. Um, does the town of Scarborough have a representative? Is this group? Yes. Well, this right. is something this, this is something different. So we are oh. working on the coastal resiliency um, regional plan with Southern Maine Planning and Development. Um, to my knowledge, we don't have anyone involved in the model ordinance development. Um, and actually, I this is the first I'm hearing about that project, Pete. So thank you for sharing yep. that. Sorry, Jamie. I should have asked earlier prior to tonight. I wasn't sure and uh SMPDC wrote this up um, in conjunction with several different towns, 10 different towns that they've worked with over the past. And I thought it was really, really good work for us to kind of build from. So I should have shared it earlier. I apologize. Well, that's okay. And technically Scarborough is outside of SMPDC service area. We're kind of like right on the border though. So we do get pulled into some of their work um, because we are part of the Saco Bay watershed. Mm -hmm. um, we're technically members of Greater Portland Council of Governments, which kind of serves the greater Portland area and does similar work to SMPDC, but they do collaborate a lot. Um, but it's it's good to know and um, I'll be interested in seeing it when it's available for us. And you sent, you put the, actually Pete put the um, link in the chat. So I'll make sure that that gets sent out to everyone um, after the meeting so others can take a look at it as well. And just yeah, kind of working on that a little bit, I will share that um, the planning department is including funds um, in our fiscal year 2014 CIP. Um, 
proposing to do a vulnerability assessment of Scarborough areas and infrastructure. So um, it will relate nicely to um, ordinance updates that may be needed um, as well. And um, would this be something that we could also share with the Long Range Planning Committee that's developing some of these ordinances? I would think so. Pete, do you know if this is final or is this a draft version? It's final, it was published in April actually. Um, okay. So it's been, it's been around for a while. Um, totally and uh, it, it, but it's starting to just really start getting passed around. And, and I was thinking of it in the context of the overlays that we originally had kind of batted around those ideas. Um, so I think it's a good starting point. It's not, I don't think it's everything we want to do, but it's a really good starting point. It covers site plan, floodplain management ordinance, um, uh, shoreland zoning. Uh, and so it's really hitting on a lot, you know, three of the big ordinances we have to kind of tackle when we're thinking about resilience. Yeah, and we'll share this with Autumn also because she's really digging into our town ordinances. And so I'm sure that this will be um, real of interest to her. Great. Uh, thank you. So the next is our Promoting Engaged Citizen Stewardship Subcommittee. Um, and I know they uh, talked about a couple of different um, items, especially Rita and Marlo have been putting in extra time uh, since our last meeting. So I think one one or both of you would like to report out. Sure, sure. Um, just wanted to bring you up to date uh, on a meeting that we had with Jessica probably a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she has very generously offered to uh, make a presentation um, to the town council uh, regarding the economics around land preservation. Um, so we met with her to kind of discuss the parameters of that presentation. And um, she is going to be able to present sort of main base data. Uh, she does not have Scarborough specific data at this time. Um, but we we're hoping that in that presentation, she could sort of advocate uh, for such a um, Scarborough specific open space study. Uh, the last study that was done in this regard was done some 25 years ago. So I think it's, it's, it's time. Um, she will be able to present a slideshow with the uh, data and graphs and general information about the benefits of land conservation. Um, and we have suggested that we can help out with perhaps some Scarborough based images for that presentation. So she would include information about working landscapes, water resources, um, wildlife habitats and rec recreational opportunities. Um, as I said, the target audience would be um, the town council. Um, we would uh, ask that the presentation be available through Zoom and YouTube as uh, town council meetings are broadcast and um, consider either a presentation uh, or a joint town council conservation commission and perhaps um, the Scarborough Land Trust workshop. Um, we were also um, discussing preparing an information sheet, a sort of a takeaway uh, with key points and information for the town council members and also have that information sheet available on the town's website for public viewing. So um, we hope to have a discussion um, among all of you tonight as to uh, whether you support this kind of presentation. Uh, and if so, we would, we would ask uh, Jamie and Karen to assist in scheduling a, a date and time. So I'm going to um, defer to Karen since she would know, I'm happy to help. I'm just wondering about timing since we are into budget season um, and a lot of the town council's time is taken up with um, budget meetings and whatnot. So I'm gonna let Karen weigh in on when she sees timing may, mm -hmm. uh, may work out for the council. Sure, so I've actually, actually already been given a date. Um, and so not only am I on 
Town Council, I'm on the Finance Committee, but this is a lot more interesting and important to me. So we're going to move forward. <laughs> and right now, you guys are scheduled for it would be the April 19th Town Council meeting. And so the workshop would stop would start at 530 and then you'd pop about a, an hour up to an hour and a half. And um, I think we're going to probably dive into what that workshop is going to look like when we talk about the Town Council goals soon. Um, but I, I pretty sure that we're right now penciled in and I would like to keep that and put that in ink if you guys think that's something that we can do. That's great. I hope so. Yes. Perfect. And then we'll get some get some more details. But I'm, I'm really excited about also putting together this like handout fact sheet that can live beyond the, the presentation. I think that's going to be a really important resource. So if, if folks do have imagery, uh, that's really helpful um, that it be Scarborough specific. OK. Thank you. I, um, I'm excited about it and incorporating that into what we plan for April 19th. Super. Yeah, in terms of getting photos to you, Jessica, I can set up a folder within the uh, commission's shared Google Drive um, or Google folder. And so people, if they want to just upload them Perfect. there, yep. um, so that it's not filling up your inbox. And I will make sure that everyone has the link um, again after this meeting. Everyone, I believe, should have, everyone on the commission should have access to that folder. So if you don't, um, if you find that you don't, just let me know and I will give you access. Do we have a sense of what kind of imagery you're really looking for for this? I like to call it aspirational. So, you know, we really want to evoke the benefits and pretty landscapes never hurt. Um, you so, know, if you really you really want to hit people, you, kids and dogs. <laughs> Faces. Well, the reason I ask is I have a, I have, from work, I have a whole series of gorgeous fall 2010 aerial imagery of not the whole town, but mostly around Scarborough Marsh. Wow. Um, oh, perfect. That that, they're very powerful because it's fall, it's a king tide, uh, and like there's not a speck of cloud in the sky. So I'm happy to try to go through some of those, but I literally have like 300 photographs and they're about 35 megs each. <laughs> wow. So you have a lot of high quality photos. <laughs> so we'll have to maybe, maybe go, I can, maybe I can, I'll have to figure out how to, to, we'll have to figure out how to maybe go through some of those. Yes. Nice. Okay. Great. Thank you, Rita and Jessica. Um, Marla, did you have anything to add? Um, well, I just wanted to thank Jessica for offering to do this. I, I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be very interesting. And I think we're going to get a great turnout. I'm hopeful at least. Um, and I just wanted to say that's really great timing. April 19th is just a few days before Earth Day, which is on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Karen. Thank you, Karen, for organizing that. It's great. So efficient. <laughs> Um, and I can give a quick update on um, Sustainable Scarborough Day. So um, if we're ready to move on. Yeah. You guys all yeah. ready? Um, so <laughs> like, let's move it along. Um, so we had our first planning committee meeting for Sustainable Scarborough Day on Thursday. Um, this past week, we have set a date of October 1st, um, which is a Sunday, but it's going to coincide um, as much as we can with the um, farmer's market. So hoping to um, kind of catch people that may be coming to this area for the farmer's market and then others who um, obviously through advertising get others to the event as well. The thought is to do it as a bit of a, a hybrid, like a, a trade show with vendors and um, organizations providing information and then do a series of um, short 30 minutes or so workshops on various topics and we'll set the workshop schedule ahead of time so that people can um, kind of plan their visit around topics that they might be interested in. Um, we have started a, um, a spreadsheet for the committee to talk about um, various groups and topics that they would like to see um, invited to participate in the event. Um, my thought was to keep it smaller this year since it is our first year and see um, how things go, get some lessons learned and see what worked and what we would do differently. And um, hopefully it will grow and become an annual event um, for the future. 
Um, we had initially talked about doing it this spring, um, but there's just too much going on and too many great ideas. Um, so the thought was doing it in the fall would allow people, people start thinking about like home heating and snugging up their house for the winter time and things like that. So um, it's a, a good time to catch people who might be wanting to do some um, energy efficiency upgrades or DIYs and things like that at their home. Um, so yeah, October 1st, again, was the date uh, we talked about uh, hosting it at Wentworth School. Um, so we'll need to iron that out um, in the town hall and public safety building would also be available um, since the farmer's market is right out front here at, at town hall. So other things, other areas to, to think about. Um, but Wentworth School is just great because they have their beautiful um, garden, community garden, school garden, um, and outdoor spaces and also indoor auditorium spaces as well. Um, so Rita, Marla, and Randy were part of that meeting. And if you want to kind of chime in with other ideas. You noticed how she said we were going to keep it small this first year to, to <laughs> test it out. And, and yet we're expanding across the whole municipal <laughs> campus from the school to the public safety building. I was uh, saying either school or okay, this area. Well, <laughs> I guess we, we have big dreams anyway. And, um, I, you know, there was talk about having um, EV cars to test drive, oh, yeah. uh, you know, talking about uh, electric vehicles, talking about bikes and non-fuel uh, uh, um, use cars or transportation um, uh, and, and workshops, places for some, somebody to come learn either from the vendors or from the, the um, classroom, the public library is gonna be involved, maybe a speaker uh, as an author or the kickoff of a book club or some special reading. Um, lots of really interesting ideas to get people to both inform and engage people and excite them about what's possible here. And there has been a, a list, as um, Jamie mentioned, started up that includes a lot of, so we also want a balance of um, vendors who can offer things to you for pay and vendors who um, are not going to uh, encourage or increase your consumption of stuff. So, um, you know, a balance of, of all that, and we're collecting ideas right now. Um, so, Marla and Rita, I don't know what else. Yeah, and I was just going to say if the, if the commission has ideas for topics or, um, or people to pursue or um, organiza organizations to pursue, um, feel free to either share them tonight or um, send me an email. Um, I can probably give everyone here access to the spreadsheet as well. If you wanna just go in and enter that information into the spreadsheet that the uh, the planning committee is using, um, but looking for um, all different topics related to sustainability and conservation. So native plants, healthy lawn care, um, composting and food waste, um, biking, um, recreation, whole host of different things. Yeah, I was just really pleased to see that the library was going to be very involved in this, as well as Allison Carrier, our, the town's communication director, uh, in helping us get the uh, the word out about this and to um, have everything from you know book displays to uh, information in the town e-news. So um, very very well thought out, I think. Yeah, and Kathleen just gave the idea of go Maine for um, commuter. Um, and ride sharing, commuting, things like that. That's a great idea. That one wasn't on the list. So thank you. We'll add that one. Um, so we're, um, the committee's planning to meet monthly as we um, move forward um, so that we can make sure we stay on track and then obviously more frequently as we get closer to the event. Um, so we'll have regular updates for this group. Um, and if anyone wants to, anyone else would like to participate, um, just let me know. Many hands make light work. So we would welcome uh, more people to uh, to get involved. Thank you. Um, so let's move on to new business and uh, the town council goals. So exciting that they, um, you know, the leader featured the outcome of the goals session uh, to have the chair of our town, the Scarborough Town Council talk about conservation principles, I think is a pretty big deal. Um, something that we should celebrate. And uh, there's a priority to incorporate sustainability and conservation 
um, now. And so I'd like to turn it over to uh, Karen, who is really passionate about this and is leading this, especially this piece for the town council. Tell us sort of what's, um, what's ahead for us. We already know April 19 um, as a date that we're going to be um, talking with town council, but um, fill us in, Karen. Sure. So, I mean, first of all, we got April 19 on the books, but and I am relying 100% on you guys to help me put together what this workshop is going to look like. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll jump into that in a second, because um, the workshop is really kind of the jump off to how we're going to, I think, educate town council and really try to show them how we can implement 30 by 30 and also just make conservation part of our process, part of the conversation consistently. I think I've said to you guys, part of the reason that motivated me to run was I just really felt like the planning process was just missing that key conversation, the eyes on it that I think people on this board have, that people on the planning board didn't have. Um, when I decided to run, Don Anderson was like, you need to talk to Randy, you need to meet Randy Hogan. And so as soon as I found out no one was running against me, I pretty much dove right into what I wanted to do as a town counselor. So you know, this goal that came up was pretty much created by Randy working with me and John Anderson, because we just, we said to her, what's the most important thing? What's the best way that we can try to bring conservation to the table and really, again, conserve our land and the marsh? Um, so with that being said, I mean, John Anderson has pretty much tasked me with putting this workshop together, implementing what this is. Me and what this what this spreadsheet has up there right now that you don't see is all the other um, cells after it that John labeled who's in charge of what, what he wants to see and things like that. You guys only got the two little columns here. We have all the rest that we're looking at. And so when I look at this, the ones that I'm looking at for sustainability, conservation and climate change are me and John Anderson. John Anderson's a pretty busy guy as the chair. So here I am. Um, and so when we come to the 30 by 30, I think you guys have read this. I think we're already sort of, but the Parks and Land Conservation Board is already working on updating their evaluation tools, my understanding. Um, understanding specific actions. I'm just reading the goal, but really what we're looking for here is to create a workshop where we can get before town council and educate them how we can do accomplish this 30 by 30 goal. Randy and I had a great conversation today about what that workshop would look like. Um, I know right now it says that it's partnering with the Conservation Commission, Parks and Land Conservation Board and the Scarborough Land Trust. Um, this really, in my mind, when I found out that there was a state statute creating the Conservation Commission, I, in my mind, it really bumped you guys up a couple notches in my view, where you really need to be a bigger part player in this town altogether. And so, when I'm thinking about a workshop, it would be pretty much run by you guys showing, telling the town how we can do better and why this isn't important to us. Um, I don't want to, I feel like Randy really can really, I think she'll have a better way of articulating the best way to how to work, have the workshop break out. Um, but that's for April 19th. I really think you guys are going to be the ones that are going to tell me what you think that should look like. Um, and so Randy will get that together. The other part of the goals was the partner with the Conservation Commission and Sustainability Committee to integrate into the town's planning process. And I know, Randy, you guys had said that you guys, are you gonna be doing some educational workshops with some of the other boards? Yeah, so um, uh, under, it's actually a sub under conserving land is to develop uh, better relationships with between the different boards, long range planning, planning board, um, land board and so forth. So we're we're doing that. I think separate from this town council workshop, we need to figure out as a commission how we're going to be having these uh, you know, collective meetings, kind of like what we did with sustainab sustainability committee, was it last year or even mm -hmm. longer ago? Um, having those sort of, uh, you know, two committees brainstorming meetings. Um, so we've got a, a round to go with that. Yep. And I, I'd floated the idea and I know, I think Eric's there, right? And I talked to Eric in autumn and Randy all about the idea of, you know, getting you guys at the table with the planning board. I think, and I, I just don't know what that would look like, but I know it's coming from the planning board. 
I feel like I didn't have the knowledge to even kind of recognize some of the stuff that you guys right away look at things and you're just like, this doesn't make sense or this can be done better. And so I think we talked about identifying maybe certain things that would be good to point out to planning board members. I know they don't like this, but I'm like, I said to Autumn, I'm like, can you tell us what we did wrong? Like I, for me, it's really good to like, show me an example of we did this wrong, we can do this better. And I don't wanna harp on that, but I'm also like for someone on the planning board, those are the perfect, that's how I learn. Well, we should have done it that way. And I don't know if that's something that would be beneficial for you guys, for them, how that would be structured. But I know it was something in my imaginary like world here, could we ever get them together and somehow educate them on just the basic principles? I don't know, maybe? Yeah, so I think the, um, the what there have been a couple things that we talked about tonight, both the sort of like, really getting involved in the review process, starting to get our feet in that, but then, um, and, and feel what that process is like, what, what are the issues that are coming up, and then sorting out how can we do this process better as a town. Um, and then the second is, uh, you know, that we have these model ordinances now around coastal resilience, um, that that's great. I think once we get the the map where we have priority conservation um, pieces mapped out and we've developed our priorities, that would be another thing that we can bring together with the the land board. Um, so there are a few pieces that are coming together right now and and fairly quickly now that we can deliver on that second piece, um, partnering to integrate into the town's planning process and having a couple of recommendations. Um, and then the, the first uh, piece, you know, we have that opportunity to plan what does what does April 19th look like? We have a big piece of it already identified, which is um, the economics of land conservation. Um, but there are other aspects of it, I think that we can um, continue to discuss and flesh out. I, I see it as something being Fairly top line, um, not a whole lot like, you know, that that typical three to five points of what it is that we want the council to take away from it and for us to all agree on so that we're getting closer to knowing how we're going to achieve that 30 by 30 and what resources um, we need broadly, but especially as the Conservation Commission to be able to, you know, for example, put together an open space plan. Um, and have that really well-defined. Yeah, hopefully the uh, request for the open space plan will be in the budget. I will support that. That's great. Um, yes. and I'm definitely interested in that report or whatever that Pete was talking about, because I mean, it, it kind of touches on basically what, what we want to do and it sounds like there's, like I've said, we're not recreating the wheel. Other people have already done this stuff. People have written ordinances. And um, so when we look at the final goal here, we have to provide two to three recommendations that identify programs, resource needs, and quick wins that lead to a more sustainable Scarborough by June 30th, 2023. I did ask John Anderson what he meant by the June 30th. And he simply is just saying, you know, I want to check in. And I think what we're saying is, we want to be on everyone's mind. We want to be doing something significant, even if it's small, that's like kind of noteworthy that we're kind of plugging away. Um, and so when we say quick wins, you know, we think about, is there something that we can change? I mean, Noah immediately identified that, you know, we have an outdated tree list. I don't think that's the right term for it. I apologize, but a list. <laughs> um, and it's things like that. I mean, that's and that's huge. And you guys are going to work on it. And I can't imagine your there's a probably your list. And you can it doesn't have to take forever to do certain things. Um, and so I think if we can find quick things that we can do to I, I'm saying like keep town council's attention, say that we are important, we're active, we're making movement is really important. Um, so when when I when I we we're trying to figure out what they mean by identify programs, I don't know if we we're going to run programs, educate programs. I know that we had talked about when it comes to sustainability, it's hard to implement sustainable practices because they can be expensive, but maybe we can, you know, make sure people are aware and identify programs that are available to people maybe more. And I think that's kind of what town council meant when we were looking at that. 
when we talk about resources need, you know, what do you guys need to get these goals? Um, so I would think an open space plan would probably be one of the biggest, quickest asks that we can make to really get us going. I don't feel like we can move forward unless we have an updated one of those. And I think that's what you guys are saying. Um, and so when we talk about that, I think it's good to stay focused about maybe what ordinances where we can change. I would love to look at what the site plan ordinances really are and see if there is a way to integrate us into it. Um, and I don't I think you guys maybe would have a better concept of that than I would. Um, and so I ran for town council because I want to preserve our land. I want to conserve it. I have no idea how to do this. And so, you know, they put me on this commission because they knew that I was motivated and I want to push this through. And I'm, I'm relying on you guys and your expertise to help, you know, me or educate me so that I can go to town council and really show them why this is so important and it needs to be important forever. The fact that this has never been a goal ever, I, this is huge and it's 2023 and I'm and I just like I'm gonna run for town council I was pretty busy and here I am and I'm not like now the face of conservation and now I'm putting all the pressure back on you guys <laughs> um and I'm here for you and I want to be able to you know help make this workshop go really well I think this is a huge step and I think this is a great step so I don't know if we have questions yeah Pete sure. has raised his hand thank you Karen yeah. Karen, thank you for those really strong words. They they mean a lot. Um, I, I I think we're gonna also need to depend pretty heavily on Andrew, who's in the room. Um, they've been prioritizing, and they have their own methodology for helping to kind of prioritize land conservation. So, um, Andrew's Andrew's probably gonna have to be part of the process um, for that meeting, uh, yep. and probably has significant input into that. Yep. Um, there is also, it might be a little too soon to talk about it, but we're trying to develop or get a new land prioritization tool that relates to coastal areas um, developed in Southern Maine. It, it, it's a science project, so I won't really get into it too much, except for if it gets funded, um, that tool will be available and it will really help kind of prioritize the value ecologically of one parcel over another based on a variety of factors. Um, so it might be really, really useful. It's still, we just submitted for that proposal. Um, it's in conjunction with the Wells National Estuarine Research Reserve and the USGS. If that comes through, that data will be available by summer 2023 mm -hmm. and may help inform our process or at least be usable for a variety of different organizations to help prioritize some stuff. So yep. something we want to keep an eye on as well. Definitely. Sure. And let me, I don't want to slight the Scarborough Land Trust at all. I think I've only spoken to Randy so far. And so I haven't, I'm going to meet with the Parks and Land Conservation Board tomorrow. And then I'm going to meet with Andrew and I'll talk to him. And I know he's at the meeting. He's at those meetings. Um, and so we're going to try to find a way to integrate all of it into it. But in my mind, the biggest key of this is really kind of educating town council on why this should be one of our goals forever. And then we say, he, he, this is why, and these are the people, these are the, the game players in this that are always going to be in it, supporting us through it. Dick? Uh, Pete, who, have you got a working title for this project? Do we have a title for the workshop? No, he, he was just talking about putting in a proposal yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's still it hasn't even been fully submitted yet. It's due tomorrow, I think. Um, it, it has to do it's specifically kind of targeting marsh migration and how marshes may respond to sea level rise. But it takes into account pretty much all the layers we've just talked about, beginning with habitat, sea level rise and a variety, variety of different scoring factors that are important and kind of trying to figure out how one parcel might make more sense than another, at least from an ecological standpoint. Um, it, it's a, I don't have a, the title in front of me, um, sorry, but 
it's 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 ancillary to the work I do for the state, so I thought I'd bring it up because um, there's a good chance it will get funded, uh, and it could be pretty useful. Is there an outreach component? The, uh, well, the first phase is really kind of looking at the data and playing around with the tool and the data. Uh, but as part of that, I was kind of hoping to engage with our group uh, in the land trust in kind of putting that data to the test and how it might be used. So. Um, not really. The proposal doesn't have too much of an outreach because it's more how do you how do we use the data uh, in terms of driving decision making from a scientific question. So it's a lot of different researchers um, at the reserve and at the at the state level. But I think the eventual goal is to have this data help support the decisions we're trying to kind of make. So I'm kind of not offering Scarborough up necessarily as a test case, but that's the lens that I'm looking at using that data from. Well, you know, it's really interesting because the Spurwing division of the Wells Reserve is right here in town. Mm. And if you go onto the Wells Reserve website, you see almost no mention of it. Well, it's not the Wells Reserve, it's Rachel Carson, which is US well, Fish and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. So they're two separate organizations. They, they are a player in this project as well. U.S. Fish is a part of the project. So this would be Wells Reserve as opposed to Rachel Carson. Uh, Rachel Carson has the intention of using this data to inform their decision making as well. So there's a lot of different players involved. Okay. I just wanted to mention it's very preliminary still. It's not funded. I just wanted to mention it that it might be something that we want to consider and i'll keep everybody in the loop when we get farther along <laughs> i don't want to derail the discussion so, well, it's in something we should the, all be aware of so thank you um in terms of the um april 19th workshop um you know quickly if if i were thinking about how to frame this um it, it's about informing town council and how we all can get organized to advance this goal. So I, I see, you know, really laying out economic value and benefits of conservation. The five prince, conservation principles that we are now um, looking at when we review um, applications for land use, really talking about what those five principles are and why they're important. And then drawing a distinction with these two piece, major pieces between, uh, you know, this is this is where we're aiming for, and these are the gaps. These are the things that we're um, identifying as what is what's needed right now. Where where we are not being able to take action to advance our goals. So, for example, you know. A number of ordinances that aren't in place or that don't recognize conservation principles. So we have one uh, solution towards that or a partial solution, which is model ordinances for coastal resilience. We have um, another potential solution to really um, prioritize what land pieces that um, would get us to that goal, and that's an open space plan. Um, and, but we have a bit of a ways to go from this volunteer commission to an open space plan. So one of the, uh, we could outline what an open space plan does and uh, what it would take to get us there. So that's um, probably that sort of, that kind of framing uh, lines up with what it is you all think would be helpful. You know, it's a, what an hour, hour and a half and, and I would imagine some give and take and questions. So we don't have a lot of time to get information across, but if we think about a couple of organizing principles for what would be in that, um, that of course the land board would be a part of too. And then all along we're thinking about all the different stakeholders, federal, state, um, local nonprofits and other stakeholders are gonna help us get to this, this place and other, committees like long range planning commission committee and others. So, and planning board, of course. Um, thoughts? Marvin. Oh, Marvin. Yeah, is it okay? 
Of course. Uh, I think obviously there's an enormous amount of talent around around the table on the subjects that you're discussing that have to do with conservation and sustainability and resiliency. And I am very briefly going to talk about something that you've mentioned that is in another lane, which is uh, what I would call integrating these um, goals, these conservation goals, uh, structurally into government of Scarborough. Mm. I don't think, I mean, it's just me, but I think a lot of it sounds like ideas and talk that I don't know anybody who would be opposed to what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So it, it becomes very easy to find agreement, but what are you really finding agreement around? And I think one of the things that you have, and I sit on the Long Range Planning Committee, so I've heard you say this, Randy, uh, long range planning is just chock full of so many things to do, mm -hmm. whether they're short term or long term or a combination of them. And I don't know enough history about your commission, but I think you have a real chance to uh, harness town staff around a way to integrate all these ideas you have into long range planning an end of planning board, um, zoning board of appeals. And um, I think that's where you really start talking mm -hmm. to the council mm -hmm. in their in their language. Because otherwise if you can't if you can't, in my opinion, if you cannot weave these yeah. great ideas you have and obvious important beyond ideas into what exists in Scarborough as a means to get it done. Mm. Uh, and I think that's really where you have a, an incredible chance because who can argue with what you're talking about? But who's going to figure out how to weave it into the fabric of various committees? And I think town staff is going to be able to do that. And if Karen could get you some hours with town staff to figure out how do I get into long-range planning? What ordinance needed to be changed in order to have that done? And it's not very sexy, but I think you would, uh, I, I, I just saw the Super Bowl. I think you just have a lot of open field running. And I think you right. could make progress. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Well, that's um, very valuable. So we have open field. We may have to make sure we're carrying the ball along with us. <laughs> um, and really good, very valuable <laughs> point um, about um, uh, looking for ways to um, you know, harness the, the 19th and others to get some real concrete action. Structure. Yeah. Talk is cheap. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, everyone values conservation. It sounds wonderful. And everywhere you look, it's um, it's all over Scarborough's website and um, in our materials. And, and anytime Scarborough's talked about, we see that overview of the Eastern Trail across the marsh. Um, so uh, lots of reasons why we love Scarborough. Um, but when it comes down to it, we are forgetting the benefits. Um, we, we don't have the teeth to really um, claim these, uh, these, uh, this value. I don't know if this is the appropriate time for this question and or this committee. I mean, one of the things that I'm usually doing when I'm talking about the economic benefits of land conservation is asking for funding. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, obviously we have the land bond but there are a lot of other um, avenues for a community to fund conservation. And uh, to meet these goals, it's gonna take some, some real funding. 
And while asking for funding and town resources for cities um, is important, and I think also asking for funding is important. <laughs> I mean, I think there are lots of barriers to view conservation, but funding is always on that list. Absolutely. And that's why I think if you can, I mean, I don't know how you, you do it. It's a big job, but if you can integrate your program, for lack of a better word, into long range planning's work and the planning board's work, uh, you become invaluable. And what funding there is, uh, you don't have sole control over. I mean, you lose autonomy because you're not talking about conservation purely. You're talking about it, talking about it in terms of the structure that exists in Scarborough. As I said, a lot less sexy, but uh, uh, critical. Well, and you can really change mm. things. Great, thank you. I am. Uh, yes. Uh, well, yeah, I'd like to. You know, I know what land trust is not part of the town. Um, and so I think it's always seen kind of over here to some extent on its own. Uh, but, you know, we have four full time staff, four full time staff that all they do is work for the residents of Scarborough. Mm. It really is. I mean, we're putting in $400,000 of operating budget every year for the residents of Scarborough. We're putting in millions of dollars into acquisition and stewardship projects. Uh, we're going after that funding, Lands Remains Future, MNRCP, uh, Main Outdoor Heritage Fund, uh, NRCS. Those are all dollars we brought to Scarborough over the years. Um, and so I just ask you not to forget that, um, you know, that a lot of these things are being done. Maybe they don't get as much attention as they should. Um, and, you know, we're doing that and we can do more. Uh, you know, we have a full-time conservation director that I can guarantee has talked to every single landowner in the town that has 50 acres or more, or at least if we've tried to talk to every single landowner that's 50 acres or more. Um, you know, let's work together and make that easier. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, so um, all I can say is Scarborough Land Trust, you know, every day when we go to work, we think about uh, the residents of Scarborough. Um, we're really thinking about, you know, how do we manage these properties uh, for as many people as possible, for um, access for as many people as possible, for the resources that are on those properties that'll be here today and tomorrow. Um, so, I mean, we would just like to try to figure out ways to make that process work smoother. Um, and, you know, we're always struggling for money. I mean, that's a lot of private money to raise um, every single year. Um, so, you know, help us, <laughs> help, help us you. Help you, <laughs> got it, thank you. Um, and uh, we have such gifts in, the, in this town for uh, all the properties that Scarborough Land Trust is stewarding. Um, and the marsh and the um, Rachel Carson pieces and and many others. So thank you for that. Um, lots to celebrate too. Um, what else for Karen and this idea about the the workshop, which is I think one major step among several that we're going to be doing. Um, certainly the sustainable Scarborough Day is going to be part of that sort of process. Um, and then getting into the, um, as Marvin says it, uh, unsexy pieces of making it integrated into town government. Other comments or thoughts? Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, and now we're gonna move into reviewing and updating the town's plant species list. So I, yeah, I just wanna give a quick overview of this. Um, it's obviously nothing we're going to do tonight, but um, every, if 
people are willing to take it on as homework, I think it would be helpful. So um, Karen alluded to this earlier. Um, so Noah Corlett, who is a former member of this commission and a newly appointed member of the planning board at his first meeting discovered that um, the Scarborough Downs master plan included um, some invasives on their approved plant list. Um, and how did that happen? Um, is, is anyone's guess? I'm thinking um, they thought they were using the approved plant list and so they were fine and the planning board thought that they were using the approved plant list. Um, come to find out, we have two approved plant lists, sort of. Um, so we have um, commercial design standards that were put together probably 25 years ago, um, maybe 20 years ago, um, that has a plant list that the Downs was referencing. Um, but we also have our site plan review ordinance that has a plant list that is more up to date um, that they were not using. Um, and so uh, Autumn Spear has plans to go through and totally revise our site plan review ordinance. Um, this document is so old that we only have it in PDF version. We don't have the original. We aren't able to easily make updates to it. Um, and it has, I mean, the plant list is not the only thing that's out of date with that. So that is on um, her uh, um, list of things to do. And um, I believe Long Range Planning Committee will also be playing a role in updating those commercial design standards. So um, what was included in your packet is um, the list of plants that is in our site plan review ordinance. So the ordinance trumps the commercial design standards. Um, and so it would be great. I have gone through um, and did, did a quick scan of those plants and nothing stood out to me, but it would be great for others to, to take a look as well. Um, and really this might be an opportunity for the, for this group to um, totally revise that um, that list of plants so that we are emphasizing the use of native plants over non-native, non-invasive ornamentals. Um, I took some time and went through the, um, the Downs approved plant list and they've got, I would say <laughs> on their list are natives and the rest are non-native ornamentals. So um, moving forward, it would be wonderful to be able to have plant lists that is really emphasizing the use of native plants in our landscapes as opposed to ornamentals. Um, so wanted to hear people's thoughts on that, if it was something, um, or if there is a, a plant list that's already been created that we um, should um, reference or, or incorporate into our ordinance instead. Um, do people have thoughts? Pete. Pete. Um, so about five years ago, we worked with uh, the Cumberland County Soil and Water Conservation District to develop a planting guide. Um, it's specific to coastal areas, so coastal bluffs, coastal sand dunes, and beaches. Um, but I put a link into that guide. Um, uh, again, it's, it's specific to those areas, but I think there's probably a lot of carryover to some of the other areas. So I just put a link to that guide in our chat and we might want to use that as a resource to inform some other stuff. Um, Kathleen. Sorry, I just added um, a humane extension um, native plant list to the chat also that might be helpful to folks. Thank you. Um, I mean, aren't these plant lists, they're not static for years and years, right? So shouldn't we also have a goal to just have like an online resource go to this list and when you go to this list it's going to be the most updated version not a static list so what i found is that the what's more commonly updated are the list of plants that are not allowed or are listed as invasive or um, are not allowed to be sold in maine so the two that were on the downs list one just was added to the do not sell list in 2018 the other one is scheduled to be added to the list in 2024. Okay. So not entirely out of date, um, but in my mind, they should say, and yeah, like these are the list or the plants that we recommend that you use and confirm that like check these two sources to make sure that none of the plants that you're proposing um, are either known invasive or if they're part of the 
do not sell in main list, they're not going to be able to get that as nursery stock anyway, hopefully. Um, so how does this work? I mean, the um, we, we have an ordinance or some paper ruling that says these are the plants you may or may not use, but why can't we just simplify that to say use native, do not use um, invasives, do not use, do not sell, check with town staff for the latest, I mean, because town staff reviews, right? So All these applications. Yes. Okay. Um, I And I'm the person in the planning office that has the most knowledge of, of native plants. Except but in I'm, this case, if, you were not asked because- Well, I wasn't working here. No, no, no. In this case, this this most recent proposed landscape plan, you were not consulted because the amount of space that was being planned was not within the scope that they would normally come before you. Right, but also the the amendment was fine. There were no invasive plants in the amendment. It was the invasive plants were included in the initial site plan um, or master plan that came before planning board in 2018. Okay, so that's where the the invasive plants were um and so um yeah i'm not looking at all of the landscape plans right um otherwise you'd have to have like yet another job as part of your job right because we get a lot of them in on a regular basis so um i i'm not sure how in terms of um how our regulatory ordinances are i think that they can reference um other lists but I think that we just need to make sure that the way that we're referencing it makes sense and is able to be followed. Um, and I don't know that there is a good comprehensive, easily searchable database of native plants. Like I said, there's the um, there's really good searchable databases of invasive plant, the invasive plants in Maine and from the Maine Natural um, Areas Program and um, Department of um, Ag Conservation and Forestry has a good searchable database of um, the do not sell list, but in terms of like this is a native plant, there isn't a good searchable database for that. Oh, okay, so we have um, Kathleen. Um, I can find some good resources for that because there are some databases out there. Um, they're just a little bit hard to find. Um, so, I mean, I found the, I put in the chat that you mean. I mean, sorry, the main.gov um, invasive plant list, which I think is the most updated for this area, at least um, to the do not sell lists and all of that is on that website and they have some good resources there. Yeah, so the state maintains two searchable databases. One is the invasive list and one is the do not sell list. Okay. And they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily have all of the same species on them. I wonder whether um, the Wild Seed Project has a searchable database. I don't know. Uh, I do know that Heather McCargo put together several years back, and Marla, you can help me with this. Um, she put together um, a book, as I recall, uh, for the main DOT uh, in terms of native plants. Yes, yes. She actually received a grant from the main DOT and while C project wrote a manual and it was mostly for the maintenance of um, the, the area along the highways. To, it was encouraging them to um, either replant with native plants or to alter their mowing regime, that sort of thing. I do think Wild Seed Project is a good idea. And I I actually was trying to do a search just now. I think the main natural areas program might have also an invasive species list and or a native plant list. But I think we should take this on as an issue. I don't think we're going to necessarily solve it right now tonight. But I think we sh we should be a resource for the town when it comes to invasive species and, um, you know, encouraging the use of native plants. Um, and uh, who could help lead on that? Would that be Marla and Rita? Um, yeah, I, could, I could work on that. 
Okay. How about if, would you want to work with Kathleen? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. The more the merrier. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. I can, we can, um, and then ideas. We can work with Jamie, Jamie too. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the, the reason I came tonight is uh, Marvin Gates again. I'm president of the Proudsnack Conservancy, whose mission, whose sole mission is the management of invasive plants and the promotion of native plants, again, on the peninsula of Proudsnack, but it, it's attached. And I, uh, uh, we've, we've published a field guide, uh, the main, main uh, Audubon, uh, bringing nature home program based on Doug Tallamy's work. Uh, Andrew Tufts is there, but all I'm all I'm saying is I spend an inordinate amount of time of my days on this subject. And if anyone on your commission would care to reach out to me, I can help uh, channel reason. Uh, I'm not talking about financial resources. I'm talking about educational resources. Right. Um, by the way, I added Prout's Neck Conservancy to the list of participants in sustainable Scarborough Day. So, because right. uh, of the extensive work that you're doing. And I, I don't know that I knew that you had a field guide. I think that's going to be very interesting to a lot of people. Um, I brought a couple. That's sorry. wonderful. And the, uh, the uh, just anecdotally, as, as far as ornamentals versus, I can see you, I can't shut up, the, uh, <laughs> versus natives in speaking to people really across Maine and even beyond the, the and you probably know this, uh, the idea that people like their ornamental plants, obviously invasive plants should, can't be on the list, but the, the formula, so to speak, is something like 60 to 70% native and the rest non-invasive ornamental. And you're really, appealing to both sides of people's desire, as opposed to all native, which limits how pretty your gardens can be. Yeah, and another thing is a lot of times we're putting these plants in engineered landscapes that they were never, these plants are adapted to grow in the natural main environment, not in the engineered main environment. So sometimes our native plants aren't going to grow well in like a um, an island, a middle, an island in the middle of the road, or something like that. So there are a, there are applications where ornamentals or non natives may make sense. Um, but like I said, encouraging the use of natives over ornamentals, I think, it should be a goal of this group. Uh, fair to say, um, or just use this space to say this is one of the. Well, this is highlighting a way that the Conservation Commission can be really helpful to the planning board as they're reviewing landscaping plans. Um, would that we had been involved in 2018 on this issue, then we would we would have been able to sort of circumvent the issues that they have now. Um, but here we are and we're moving forward. Thank you, Marla and Kathleen and, and Marvin for being a resource. Um, okay, let's do lightning round of updates. Um, anything else from the town council, Karen? I mean, you know, just the priority goal and the April 19th workshop. You got anything else for us? I think that's a big focus of our, for me right now. Um, you know, again, with budget season coming up, I think I again encourage you guys to get those asks in there. I am on the finance committee and I'll be looking at the details of that stuff and supporting you in that manner as well. Thank you. Can I just add that there is the um, GMO workshop? Oh, um, yes. Coming up. Is it I Wednesday? Think it, this Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Um, to kind of go over the questionnaire that um, this group weighed in on and all of the other committees also weighed in on about um, how to update the, the GMO. So um, there will be a workshop this uh, this Wednesday at 530 to go over um, the outcomes of that kind of information gathering. Uh, thanks, planning board. So the only two updates that I had um, tonight were really we've already sort of covered. Um, I think as sort of Rita had mentioned and Karen had talked about um, uh, some good opportunities to sort of connect with the planning board and have joint meetings and get to work with each other a little bit more. Um, 
I know Angela Blanchett, our town engineer, has done MS4 stormwater sort of requirements um, and you know presented those to the planning board before. So um, we're thinking that a joint meeting with the Conservation Commission and the planning board kind of going over some of that stuff would be beneficial. Right. Um, something that's been in the back of my mind as we're talking about um, you know, Pete mentioning some of the SMPDC sample ordinance work um, is how well that will probably fit in with a low impact development ordinance when the town um, implements that, which I believe would need to be se September, but draft is July 1, July. 2024 right now Okay, per our stormwater permit. Um, so that'll be a good opportunity to sort of um, start working uh, together a little more formally and, um, and meeting. Um, the only other update I had was the uh, plant list that we just went over. Um, so I'm glad you guys are all starting to think about that and um, help us with it. So we're looking forward to working on that. Um, I think that's really all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and sustainability committee. Uh, yeah, so sustainability committee, um, sustainable Scarborough Day, um, we've already talked about, um, and then uh, we are assisting the planning department in reviewing a an ordinance um, to allow um, kind of small scale energy systems um, to be cited at um, in conjunction with other developments. So kind of looking at, um, I won't say really renewable energy, but um, cleaner energy than um, other types of fossil fuel burning um, energy. So um, we assist the sustainability committee assisted Autumn with a review and recommendations for updating that ordinance that will be going to the ordinance committee um, this spring and then on to council. Um, and I think those are the two big ones out of our, our January meeting and um, looking at other opportunities to um, increase efficiency of municipal buildings um, is kind of on our horizon um, moving forward this spring. Yes. And Parks and Conservation Land Board has the new vice chair. Would I think you care so. to speak? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a, I was sick last month and I missed it. Um, so I was reading the notes and I believe I was voted vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> miss a meeting. <laughs> if you miss a meeting, yeah. you get a, you get, get all the fun assignments. You get the fun assignments. Um, so meeting tomorrow, uh, and I believe the, the and I'm looking at Andrew because I'm assuming you were there, Len, so you could tell me, the, the primary goal for tomorrow is to start the review of the current evaluation process, um, which is a big undertaking. And I don't believe it's been uh, updated since its creation, although it was a, it was a massive undertaking to create it. Yeah, so it's um, a little over 20 years old. Oh. Yeah, some time has passed. All and right. uh, I think I'm not overstating things that when it was created, there were more large parcels available. Um, and so it is slightly weighted towards large parcels and, and taking a look at whether or not that that part of the scoring system continues to be relevant to what is available today. I think is one of the years. A lot has changed in 20 years. A lot has changed in 20 years. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any other last thoughts or notes? Thank you. This has been a great meeting, I think, and really appreciate everyone's time tonight. Their, your thoughts and, and the time that you put in in between our meetings. We'll see you next month, but have lots of conversations in between as well. And thank everyone for uh, your perseverance as we are dealing with our technical issues today. <laughs> yeah, I get Thanks credit for, for the overage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thanks all. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. All right, thank you. What's this